Sometimes the stories you write are mysteries to yourself in a way when you begin. The Botticelli tree just outside the house and at the time when I was writing this it was uh, in flower and somehow it's in quite an entertaining idea to have the witch sitting on the cherry tree. And what about the boy who was followed home by animals? People tried to take his magic away. Why do you write stories like that? I suppose in those stories I'm trying to suggest that children have power, they can develop their own destinies to some extent. If I think what the element in her stories are, I would always come back to the element of magic and the element of taking the mundane and turning it on its head. As we cross over from childhood to adolescence, adolescence to adulthood, it's never quite as simple as, simple as it sounds. But we cross from one state to another. When I put my foot in the water, you say the word then, Merlin. I spoke the word. My father changed before my eyes. He became a bridge, as he had known he would. As for the word, it whispered over the restless surface of the river, rang lightly on the red, rotten rock. You gave me a magic word. Where do you get your magic words from? Uh, quite often in everyday life, I find myself testing words for their possibilities. I try out spoonerisms to quite a big extent, you know, where you swap the initial letters of words over. Um, I look for rhymes, I think. I do, all, I do that just unconsciously. You write books for teenagers that have romance and sexuality in them. Do you think that um, love, that romance, is often dangerous? I think it can be. And yet, it's not just simple because often romance is based on some sort of biological commandment. Right, come on. Okay. Now you can strip your boyish clothes from my limbs and lay my beautiful white body bare. I'll have a go. Now, the books like the tricksters and so forth, they're very different from your illustrated books because the illustrated books have got an element of collaboration in them. The Boy Who's Followed Home was originally written, as my stories tend to be written, to be heard. Um, but lo and behold, it was going to be turned into a picture book. So Margaret gives you that wonderful character, Mrs. Kathy Squinch, and all she tells you is she was not very respectable looking. So that gave me a, 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 a great deal of freedom as an artist to, uh, to decide how was Mrs. Squinch not very respectable looking. And I gave her a rat necklace and, and, uh, and uh, those, those fur pieces that uh, women used to wear of animals. You very quickly encounter that imagination and that sort of mischief which is in that book. It's wonderful, you don't have to say, what shall I draw now? You know, if you've got someone there saying, you could draw, you could draw. How many languages have you been translated into? Oh, I think there's about 15 or 16. And how many books have you written? Ah, well, I couldn't tell you exactly, but it's close to 200. The winner of the Chance Christian Anderson Medal for writing is Margaret Mahi of New Zealand. Hans Christian Andersen is for every language, and in the world of literature, there is only one bigger, and that's the Nobel Prize for Literature. Goodbye, Margaret! Bye! Wee! Long-faced tale.